So when we're interconverting between our Fisher to Haworth projections, the first thing we should always do is label our carbons. So carbon one is at the very top and carbon six is the one at the bottom. Now the second thing we have to know and understand is that in our Fisher projection, if our OH group is pointing to the right in the Fisher projection, in the Haworth projection, that OH will point down. So if OH is pointing right in Fisher, in Haworth it will point down. Therefore, if our OH is pointing left in the Fisher projection, it'll point up in our Haworth projection. Now, the third thing that I want to make sure that we understand is that if we're trying to figure out if our carbohydrate is D or L, so if it's dextrorotary or levorotary, we look at the OH group that is furthest away from our uh, CHO group at the top. So this is an example of an aldose because we have a CHO, this is not a ketose. So if we go to the furthest OH group, that is at carbon number five. Remember, we are disregarding the carbon number six. So the furthest OH group from this CHO group is at carbon number five. So this OH group determines whether it is levo or dextro. So since this OH group is pointing to the right, we know that it is dextro, because if it was pointing to the left, it would have been levo. Remember, levo, left, they both start with L. That's why we can remember that those two go together. So that makes dextro right. So in this case, this is a dextro D sugar, because OH is pointing to the right. Now, this OH group, the one that's furthest away from the CHO carbonyl, is going to attack the carbonyl. So two things we've noted already, that this OH group determines whether it is dextro and levo, and this OH group is the one that's going to attack our carbonyl. So when it attacks our carbonyl, we can see that our sugar is kind of folding in because it's kind of moving this way and that structure can be represented like this we see that our oh which was right over here it's moving in and it's trying to form a bond with that carbon over here now what's interesting is that when this oh group attacks this carbon we can get two different forms we can either get the alpha form or the beta form so we can have two different isomers now in the next slide we can actually see the products so remember this oh group that was furthest away from the carbonyl uh, it attacks that carbonyl group and when it attacks we can get these two different variations we can either get alpha or beta so if the CH2 and the OH group are pointing in opposite directions which means the OH group is pointing down this is alpha but if the OH group is pointing up and it's in the same direction as the CH2OH group it is going to be beta so we get these two uh, different variations. Now let's review what happened. So essentially we had our OH group that was furthest away from the carbonyl. This is the OH group that determines whether it is dextro or levo and this OH group attacks our carbonyl to form a bond. When it forms a bond we get either alpha or we get beta. Now uh, what's important to note is that when this bond is formed we get another uh, we get another chiral center. If we go back and look at the original Fisher projection, we can note that we have one chiral center, one here, and one here. So we have a total of three chiral centers. But once we get these two centers to bind, we get this bond over here, and we no longer have these hydrogens, and this actually turns into an OH group, this carbon forms another chiral center. So our cyclic structure, it'll result into another chiral center, and that's very important to note, because originally we started off with three chiral centers, and now we have four, and that will obviously change the number of stereoisomers we can have. The last thing I want to mention is that this cyclic structure, it is more stable in comparison to this linear structure. The linear structure is favored when we only have three to four carbons, but anything more than that, it's going to favor the cyclic structure. Specifically, the beta form is more favored. So if we were to write out the 
the transformation. So if we're going from alpha to linear to beta, the beta will be will be preferred 64% of the time, whereas alpha will be preferred 36% of the time, whereas linear is very, very rare. So it's only 0.01% because linear is, uh, is less stable compared to the cyclic form. And that is essentially everything that we need to know about converting between Fisher and Haworth projections. We always start off with labeling our carbons, figuring out the one that's furthest away, the OH group that is furthest away, and that is going to attack our carbonyl, and we're going to get the alpha and beta, um, beta molecules.